Hello there, I am Barbara Brooks, co-founder of Second Act Women. We are an organization that is designed to uplift, support, and provide workshops and sessions and you name it, to boost women over 40 and 50 in their careers, in entrepreneurship, and in life. And today, we are so excited to bring Laura Geller to the stage right here for our women who are really into makeup Really into Laura Geller and excited to hear some of the hottest tips for spring makeup. Now, stay tuned because Laura is going to be talking about her three big E's. Uh-huh. You're going to want to stay tuned for this. So, welcome to the stage, the one and only Laura Geller from GMA to Self Magazine to Laura Magazine. We are so thrilled to join her inside of her story before we begin. In this little small suburb I grew up in, in um, outside of New York City, I decided to go to beauty school, get my license, because you needed your license to touch someone's face back in those days. Yes. Oh. In 80s, late 70s. Yes, you did. Yep, you like the Merle it. Cosmetics days? Yeah, exactly. And yeah. I wound up going to learn how to do makeup um, because the owner of the school knew that I didn't really enjoy what I was studying at beauty school. I almost became a beauty school dropout. <laughs> I, was, I was thinking about the movie. I was learning hair. I was like, I'm not here for hair. I want to learn makeup. So he sent me into Manhattan and I made the trek every day to study theater and film makeup. Also not a course I thought I should be in, but because I was so naive, I learned the real foundation of anatomy of the face. Yes. It wasn't what I signed up for, but it was science. And that is how I studied makeup. And I thank goodness for my naivete because I learned how to really create light and dark and do sculpting of a face. And that changed the direction for me of doing makeup for the rest of my career. Mm -hmm. And Johnny, the same. Yeah. And and I worked in TV and film um, and theater. And by the way, that's how we met. And that's TV. how oh, we met. Oh, wow. We worked, we worked on a television show together. Yes. <laughs> Are you able to say which show? Yeah, we can yeah, say okay. Inside sure. Edition. Inside oh, Edition. Yes, yes, yes. And, um, I, but I was doing, I was going out to Hollywood and doing the late greats. I was doing Ginger Rogers, Audrey Hepburn, um, Paul Newman. I was doing all of, the, I was working on a TV show that featured these people. But what gave me the most satisfaction was doing real women in real time and teaching them. So I found right. that I had a niche which was educating, breaking down the science of applying makeup that made it easy for women to understand and really seeing how women transformed. And by the way, all the models, all the celebrities I've done, they too needed that kind of help. Right, and if I may say this, Laura yeah. recreated the way you put makeup on because when you went to beauty school in those days, there was a lot of anatomy, as Laura said, there were a lot of rules and lists and order, uh, incremental order of things to go. And Laura threw all of that out the window and really made it simple. And what we started out when we started the brand, we called it a very technical world called Goof Proof. Yeah. All right? Goof Proof. We had Goof Proof makeup, and that's what we did. And it works. Yeah. Because well, okay, so um, you started, uh, this is interesting, the science of makeup. I don't think that we think about this when we're applying makeup, even if it's just the mascara or just some brows for the day, we don't think about the science. What is it about the science of makeup? Yeah, I'm so glad you brought that up because I think yeah. what you think about is, oh, that's a pretty color. Right. Oh, I saw this in a magazine or I saw this on YouTube or on this influencer or I should be doing it like this. So with the science of makeup is understanding that makeup is applied to bring out shape yes. to each of your features. So for an example, for your eyes, for your cheeks, for your lips, how do you sculpt your makeup so that your features is what come out, not the makeup. Right. And so oh, I have the three E right. philosophy, which is eye line, eyelash, eyebrow. Honestly, if I were to do your makeup today, any of you, or if you were to do your makeup right now and you said, okay, I'm just running to the market. I'm just running to meet a friend. So I'm only going to put on some eyeshadow. To me, I would tell you, leave off the shadow throw a little blush across your lid, but don't leave off eyeliner, eyebrow and eyelash because that is what frames your eye, 
opens up the eye and gives the eye expression. And without those three things, you might as well not do anything right. else. Because that shape creates things like when people say to you, wow, you look great, but I don't really know why. That's a true compliment. Not how good is your makeup. Not oh. makeup. You look fabulous, I don't know why. It's because of what Laura just said, bringing out the shapes of your eyes, cheeks, and lips. Yeah, another thing I would always say is, uh, for an example, blush. Yeah. I see so many women when I used to teach lessons and I hand them the brush because it's one thing for me to tell you how to do it, but I like to see how you're doing it, how you're picking up the brush, how you're applying it. And then I would catch the mistakes, but I'd always see women putting on blush after they went like this, then they'd go like this. And I'd say, why are you putting it in the center of your forehead, the tip of your nose and the center of your chin? That is not sculpting your cheekbone. You put it's blush funny. on to add color. Right. But also to sculpt I will do this. And everybody's doing this. <laughs> and, and, and I'm saying, no, 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 no. So right. when we get to doing Guadalupe and Laura, I will teach you real quickly, everybody, because it won't change no matter who I'm working with, how to put on blush properly. Right. Okay, I, I this is really great lessons. And, and again, I guess a lot of us, I see a lot of heads like Verona and others going, yeah, interesting. It is about contouring and accenting your features. So I want to open it up. We have Stephanie Classy and uh, Verona and some of the others because I took my glasses off. So um, you can see my Laura Geller, which I'm loving. Um, so I want to open this up. Unmike, ladies, this is your forum. This is for you to ask uh, uh, her questions be because, you know, we're going to be doing faces in a moment. Go ahead, Verona. Oh, morning, everybody. Um, so I've got two questions. So, so number one, I, I, I had recently cut off all my hair. So now everybody is seeing more of this. Okay. And I'm an extreme minimalist. I'm, I'm the kind of girl that is, is gonna, you know, put on, put on the eyeliner, eyebrows, eyelash, everything. Okay. Um, so, and I'm busy growing out. I don't know if you guys can see, I try to hide it. I am growing out my eyebrows like it's nobody's business. I, I, I want the Brooke Shields look. Like, that, that is what I'm going for. So do you have any um, any advice on, on, on what to do once this bush is all grown up? Ooh. Yeah. Okay. A bush. <laughs> First, the eyebrows are all grown out and I, I need to have them shaped. Hold on, Ken. Well, first of all, congratulations, Verona. You can sport that beautiful hair yes. like nobody's business. Yes, right? I, love Thank you. Yeah, I love it on you. And talk about minimalist. This will be a lot lighter housekeeping than anything you've ever done, obviously. Um, it sounds to me like you're already there because you said you do liner, you do lash, and you do eyebrow. I'm gonna tell you that we're all living in a new world and I don't think it's gonna change even though we are seeing the light at the end of the tunnel, I think we're all still gonna be showing this. So no matter yes. who you are, I think this is what people are seeing and this is how we're speaking to people. I mean, when I think about myself and when I walk in the street or walk in the lobby of my apartment building, if I see somebody I recognize, we're doing this, we don't know if we're smiling, right? So mm -hmm. eyes may be the most important thing and the most important takeaway today. I would tell you, Verona, like I'm gonna recommend for Guadalupe and for Laura, that doing those three things are critical, but when your eyebrows come in, if you are not an expert at shaping them and you're lucky enough to get a full eyebrow, because goodness knows after a certain point, brows don't grow in as much as they did and they're, they don't look as Brooke Shieldsy as yeah. we'd like them to. Right. We're gonna also go over a quick brow um, fill-in application, but I would recommend that maybe you do find in the area you live, a brow bar that really specializes in giving you that first good shape. Yes. Because once they do it for you, you can keep it up or you can keep going back for maintenance, yes. but I would not attempt if you're not good at it, you know, and most women aren't, most people are not. I would attempt you going, recommend that you go to somebody who does that right. specialty. And I love it. One okay. thing that I might add to your regime that you might want to consider since your hair is so short, and by the way, I love it with the big hair, it's <laughs> fabulous, um, is a little bit of contour and highlight to reshape your face a little bit. That might just be one more new thing that you can add. But we'll go over okay. all that. 
For okay. sure. Oh. Dina, Dina Jones, it looks like you have a question. You're unmuted. Yeah, well, I have two. I don't really know how to do my eyebrows and I'd like to learn how to do wings. Oh, the, uh, the, uh, wings. the wings, the wings. Yeah. The wings. yeah. Um, what are wings? <laughs> is it, is it, that little flick on the corner of your eyeliner. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Cat eyes. Cat eyes. I have oh, yeah. Cat eyes. I'm down. Got it. It's funny. In the 80s, I'm glad she's not watching. A very good <laughs> friend of mine, every time I would see her, she just would have, I would call them wings. And I'd say, Adrian, please. That's all I'm looking at when I look at your eyes is something popping out the side of your eyes. I don't see your eyes. I'm looking at the outside of your eyes and look. And I would say, get rid of the wings. But now it's a very stylish thing to do. And, you know, I'll tell you as much as I don't want to recommend it to you because we may not have the time today. If you were to go on to any YouTube channel and say, you know, teach me how to do a cat eye or a liner um, that gives you that, you'll learn it very quickly. And it's a matter of trial and error and practice. But just a few uh, pieces of laundry I want to get out of the way for everybody listening. How many people sit when they do their makeup? Can you give me a show of hands from the ones I'm looking at? I'm taking a look. Okay, so I'm only seeing two hands up. It's important. Um, so most of you are standing when you do your makeup? Okay, so for me, that's one thing that you need to change. Okay, so Bonnie, I see Bonnie's got a th thumbs up. You gotta sit when you're putting on your makeup. The difference will be night and day, but here's the other difference. How many people in this group, and raise your hands, are using a five time or more magnifying mirror? One, I'm not seeing that. And how many people are not because they're scared of looking in a magnifying mirror that sees, <laughs> that shows too much? Mm -hmm. I'm proud of you, Barbara. Okay, I think most of us don't really wanna look in those magnifying mirrors because we don't love what we're seeing. But I'm gonna tell you, starting today, if you have trouble with your vision at all, um, take the 10 time makeup mirror challenge. Barbara picked up a mirror that probably is uh, one time magnifying and then something on the other side, five. Yeah. That's what I use. Mine even is a lighted one. I just went on Amazon. There is no special brand. Conair makes them, all of them. Make, oh, there you go, Steph. Stephanie. There right. you go. I'm gonna tell you something right now. If you can see yourself looking good in yes. a five time or more makeup mirror, you will look great when you leave because I can't tell you how many people I run into who I'm like, they're not looking in a magnifying right. mirror. That <laughs> eyeliner, <laughs> that eyeliner needs a little blending. Right, right, right. You know, I'm just so, I'm just giving you the, the laundry tips of, of knowing that. And the reason for the sitting is you're likely to be, and by the way, the mirror should be close to you. So when you're standing, you're either leaning over into your bathroom mirror like this, trying to do it, or you know, maybe you're lucky enough to have the mirror close to you, but you're more likely to be in a hurry when you're doing it standing up. I, I know not everybody's gonna have a vanity, but even if you took that mirror that Barbara has um, or that Stephanie has and bring it to a table in the kitchen where you have direct light and do it in front of daylight, if you're doing your makeup first thing in the morning, oh, that's the same mirror I have, right. Yeah, Barbara. I love it. And ladies, sitting down is all about, let's face it, stability. You're not rocking back and forth. You're not swinging. You are um, rest your elbow on the table when you're doing your eyeliner and shadows. It's all about stability. It makes it faster and easier, more efficient. Yes. So that's the other thing. The reason why um, I, when um, Dina mentioned wanting to learn how to do the wings or cat eyes, whatever we call it, one of the hardest things to do, and I don't care what age you are, by the way, is doing it because the hand may not be steady. Right. So what Johnny just recommended, and we tell everybody, is rest your elbow on a tabletop. Mm -hmm. And when you go to put your liner on, it's going to be night and day, even if you're not doing a wing, because your hand's not going to shake. So please, if you would, take those few little tips before you do anything else. And I guarantee it, you're going to go, oh right. my God, where have you been all my life? Right. I didn't know sitting down and I didn't know taking a, the plunge of getting a magnifying mirror would make a difference. Mm -hmm. All right, girlfriend. Love that idea. Okay. 
I think that's a great idea because um, even even though I have this, I actually haven't used the magnifying, even though I wear readers. I do use the other side. It sounds like a lot of us do, except for probably Stephanie. Now, I have one of the questions here. Someone, uh, Sharon Thomas, do you want to ask this question? Because a lot of our ladies, as you all know, are going from dark hair to gray. And so she has just recently gone from literally from dark hair to all gray. She's grown it out. And a lot of women are doing that and they're owning their silver. Now it's a silver revolution. I love it. So, Sharon, do you want to, do you want to ask your question? I'm, 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 I'm putting you out there. Okay. I'll ask the question. Uh, oh, it looks like she's not. Okay. So the question is, um, how should I change my makeup? Um, and she does have fair skin. And so what would you recognize, I guess, globally? What can we do when we're going to a lighter color, no matter your shade? You know, I'm going to tell you the truth. No. This is not what well, yeah, no, say. Yeah. I know what you're going to say. I agree with you. It's not, yeah, I don't think you need to worry about changing your color. Not at all. Um, listen, okay. if you have brown hair, black hair, salt and pepper hair, auburn hair, it's not about changing your makeup colors. It's about wearing a look every day that you're comfortable in. Unless you're doing something for a living that you want to be more dramatic um, or really a minimalist, it's about owning your own look. And you can turn salt and pepper and never have to change up what right. you've been doing. You know, I mean, that's just my, my Laura, advice. One of the things when we first started the brand that we talked about all the time, because this is a very popular question, was harmonizing, yeah. color coordination. If you're not wearing a pink shirt and yellow pants together, then don't do that to your face. Yes, exactly. Okay? Color coordinate, harmonize it, and then do that. And then have different uh, faces that you can wear every day if you want that go with your outfits, go with your looks. Don't worry about your hair yeah, color. Yeah, don't worry about changing your makeup for your hair color, Sharon. Okay, um, Karen, you had a question. I did. Um, first of all, a disclaimer, I showed up with no makeup on, which I never do on a Zoom call because I want to practice what I learn when I leave, but this is not okay. how I normally look. Um, but okay, I'm all about lashes and brows, but the liner I've kind of stopped using as I got older. I mean, certainly under the eye, I read you're not supposed to do that because it's harsh, but even above the eye, I get hung up on liner these days. I used to wear it all the time, so I would love to learn about liner as you get older. Karen, why did you stop doing it on, on the top of your eye? First of all, I feel like it makes my lashes look shorter if I have liner on it. And I don't know how to do, uh, you know, along the tight, whatever you call it, along tight the line. I don't know how to do that. Um, <laughs> so I just sort of stopped. I don't know why, okay. <laughs> but I did. <laughs> underneath altogether and I do feel like you have to be careful because it can look really harsh oh absolutely right. especially the lower lash yeah um, I would always tell all of you who are listening that when it comes to the lower lash I may use a pencil first but I always will use a liner brush something like this I don't know if you could see this yeah um, and I will take a little powder from a palette and so we're going to be using palettes like this today and I'll use a smoky, soft shadow. It could be aubergine. It could be brown. It could be navy. And I'll take it and I'll go over the creaminess of a pencil to soften it. But I barely put liner on the bottom, but I do the whole circumference of an eye. Please remember, there you go. Perfect, Barbara. Wow, you're a really good student. You know, Karen, here's a little tip for you. I would wear eyeliner top and bottom, as Laura just said, because think about it, it's the opposite. When you're 20 years old, you can do anything you want. You're, you know, and then as, as we get more mature to our 40s and our 50s, things move around a little bit and you sort of have to draw them back in and redefine them, <laughs> all right? And liner is gonna define your eyes. I'm, I'm telling you, even if you're a minimalist, even remember you're, you're going on now and going out with masks on. Yeah, so, no, I totally agree that your eyes are your focus and I'm not really a minimalist. I just felt like I wasn't good at doing that. it right. Right. Yeah. Well, well, maybe, I, I, oh, go ahead. That will be a great segue when we teach Guadalupe and Laura today how yeah. to how to do it. You might just yes. need the right. You might just need the right tools, tool, the right liner, the right formula to make it easier for you. That's probably true. 
Let's take one more question before we dive into um, into uh, Lupe and uh, Laura Jean. Laura, do you want to do your question when you go, Lupe, or you want to ask? Well, it was oh. a general question about just brushes. Like, I, there's so many brushes for so many different things. That are, is there like a uh, a four brush set that you would just say this, this, and this, and that, that that's all you need to do magic on your face. Yeah, it's yeah. true. Oh, there, Barbara, boy, oh boy. She's a little awesome. makeup queen, I know. <laughs> You know, we, we do have a brush set that we are offering to everybody with a discount. Barbara's holding yeah. Um, I have, it comes in a case like this, right, Barbara? Did it come yes, in? Yes, and can I tell you what? They feel like butter. Yeah, and I'm not just exaggerating. And I know Laura and some of you are already, uh, Laura Jean, are already um, Laura Geller folks. But, oh, they feel like yeah. power puffs on your, as they're cruelty free, which is really nice too. But the only thing that's not in there, and to me, it's an important tool to have, is that tool, which um, that angled that brush. angled brush. Because for me, yeah. and you can pick this up anywhere. It's a tight angle, um, very yeah. thin. Is was that in there, Barbara? Yeah, it was. It was. Oh, I didn't know that. I couldn't okay. find it, so I found yeah. one. Oh my god! Thank you. Oh. Yeah, and then we got this one, and then there's this one too. Oh, good. Yeah. Okay. So that collection is so inexpensive. I can't even believe what I don't do the pricing. I just, you know, I show up for the ride, but I will tell you that is a great brush collection to get. So yes. Um, yeah. So I think that's the most important thing. It's the brushes are very confusing. I remember they when are. I in the business, there was a man named Jerome Alexander. Oh, I remember and him. Yeah. He had like oh. 5 million brushes and it was number one, number 10, mm. number five, number six. You really need a powder brush, a blush brush for your face. That's it. You really need for your eye, a big thick shadow brush that puts on all the shadow on your lid, something angled and a little soft to go into the crease if you wanna create a crease line. And then you need um, the skinny angle that I just showed you to do the line. Right. You know, as a makeup artist, I literally own hundreds and hundreds of brushes. And use the same ones. Yeah, I use five. Yeah. Or I really do the same five every day. It's a good okay. question. I really do. It's a good question. <laughs> Stephanie, I think you would probably, I'm, I'm guessing you're, cause she's a makeup artist too. And you know what she, Lupe asked a great question. So when you use something like this, which will um, be, you know, uh, what is this one? It goes all over the lid. What's that? What was that one called? Um, uh, shadow brush? It's the, um, I don't the know. eyeshadow all over the all over. Oh, so I think we get confused too, where we could still use this all over brush with the other colors too. Yes. Yeah. So really the sh that all over shadow brush is, I'll typically use it to put on a light color across my whole lid because I want to lighten my lid first. So I'll use like a very pale, like the French vanilla that mm. we have, which by the way, PS, everybody needs to own. I don't care who you are, what you do everybody should have French vanilla in their artillery and their arsenal of makeup. Uh, it looks like, why would I just need something like this? This is the highlighter. This is your all over lid color. So that shadow brush works for putting on that color, but then it will work for putting on your eyelid color too. Yes. So you don't need to change. You could just wipe it off on a tissue in between. You don't, I mean, if you had two brushes, great. Right. But if you don't, yeah. just wipe it off on a tissue. Yes, and by the way, I don't even wipe it off. I just keep laying it. Fine. That's what I do too, Johnny. Anybody else have a question? Stephanie or anyone else have a question before we go into live two different shades of skin? Stephanie's a makeup artist. I didn't know that, Stephanie. Maybe I could have guessed from your artsy, fabulous hair. Yeah, yeah I'm right? just so excited to play along. Oh. Uh, yeah, normally I don't show up to Zooms like this either, but I came fresh faced and I'm just so excited to, to play along with everyone. Oh, good. I'm so glad. I'm so mm -hmm. glad. And, yeah. and feel free to chime in, honestly, like the more the merrier. Yes. All right. Well, let's go into our first victim. Just joking. Okay. <laughs> let's, we're going to tap into Laura Jean. So Laura, so what we would like is for everyone to take their videos off so that Laura Jean's face is right here. And um, and then I'm gonna take mine off as well. And I'm going to turn it over to Laura and Johnny and let's walk through 15 minutes of how she's going to apply. And they've already applied the spackle, correct? Yes, that's the idea. So the very first thing that sounds kind of scary if you don't know 
who, what spackle is. It's an under makeup primer. And I think most people now know what under makeup primer is. It's ours and it's sort of iconic now in our line of makeup. Um, we have many different kinds, but champagne spackle is what we gave Laura because, and Guadalupe, because it is our most popular one. Um, so quick, all over the face. And what they started, both Laura and Guadalupe have started with that already. So once you're primed, frankly, I'm gonna give you my, my own makeup routine today. I'm gonna do things, change it up a little bit. I go to eyes and I'll tell you why. Because I let that primer set before I do the face. It doesn't need more than 30 seconds or a minute, but I would rather let it set, now go to your eyes. So I'm gonna tell you to take the French vanilla and I'm gonna tell you to take one of those, uh, that all over eyeshadow brush that you have in the brush kit. And I'm gonna tell you to just swipe it across your whole lid. Now, Laura, if I'm not mistaken, was one of your concerns hooded lid? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So today we are addressing with Laura how to attack making up when you have a hooded eyelid. So I'm gonna to try to make you full screen too, Laura. Let's see if I know how to do this. Um, so I don't miss getting to, let's see. Um, okay, so you put the French vanilla, go ahead and just put it right all over your eye. Okay, okay. and this is the brush to use maybe, or should well, I use- All over shadow brush on the handle. As long as it's a, a thick, fluffy shadow brush, you're good. Maybe you should put twice on the image. I did. These, any of these are fine? Like this one, maybe? Uh, any of them are good. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I mean, perfect. So this is the simple stuff, by the way. It's the liner that starts to make it a little bit more. Okay, just over the lid and not above, just the lid. So the whole eyelid, all the way up to under your brow. Last line to brow line. Last line oh, up line. here too. Yeah, all, all the way, way, right? Like every part of your eye. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. And Okay. I here's the thing. When you take a neutral color, and put it on your lid. If you're somebody who has discoloration on the lid, and I won't repeat this when we go to Guadalupe because it'll take extra time. This is sort of universal for everybody. This is going to neutralize your lid so that the colors you put on top will go on truer in color. There are eye primers, we make them, mm -hmm. um, which I also like too. But if you're in a hurry and you don't want to first do a primer on your lid and then set it with French vanilla or a light color, go right to the French vanilla. Right, and most of us concentrate underneath our eyes, the darkness. But if you do the whole, you put your concealer under here and put all the French vanilla up on top, you're covering the whole eye socket and brightening it. And that's pulling it forward and making it look more youthful. That's right. So now after we've done that, let me go to, um, Laura, let's see if I can do this. So now you've got three palettes in the Urban Garden collection, three different palettes right here. They're all gorgeous. Yes, if I love the names. Yeah, aren't they fat? Okay, if you have a heavy upper lid, and what that really means is that you no longer see your lid, what you're gonna wanna do is use more of a muted smoky color and very low shimmer or almost matte. So what we're gonna recommend here, I'm gonna take this palette. We'll show you the color. And this is sort of a great neutral color, all right, to start with. And I'll do it on Laura. Wait a minute, let me just make sure she knows the palette. It's called Bloom. It's Bloom. Called Bloom. And it's the light brown. Okay, it's, got it. It's this got light it. brown up in this corner, right here. You're okay. gonna take that and you're gonna put it everywhere, except directly under your brow. And That's I'm gonna use a different brush because it's a different color, well, right? No, oh, the same, same brush. brush. Oh, I'm telling you, no, this is the, brush. this is the late, the lazy guy to make up. Right. Oh, That's going right. to be my next book because right. I don't want you guys having any trouble. Okay. I want okay. you to make your life easier. There is, is this no going all over too? Right up to the crease. From your lash line to your oh, crease. Right. <laughs> is there a way that she should be holding her brush, say for instance, um, at the very end so there's not as much pressure or is there a certain way? This is it, right? Like yeah. this. Got it. So you see it right like this. You want to hold it a little bit, not too close to the bristles, if you will, so that you have a little more flexibility and play. Oh, and your okay. deposit of color is um, medium, if yeah. you will. When you hold it close, you get more deposit, but it doesn't, don't get hung okay. up on that. I'm, right. I'm, okay. trying, I'm keeping it simple today. I'm right. telling you right now. The next step that I'm going to tell you to do, Laura, mm -hmm. is 
they go to the go to the uh, Central Park palette, and you may say, "Uh oh, that's too dark." This dark brown right here, right okay. here. Okay. Okay. That could be used as liner under your lower lashes, which I'm going to do after. But this is what I did today. I took that darker color, same brush, same, same brush. brush. I, always, I love it. I always I tap the excess, right? right? Because I hate when I see people do this. I'm not going to do it, it. Because let's oh. it, we have germs and things in our mouth. Oh. Nobody should okay. be blowing on it. Tap it off like this. And also your saliva is wet, so it can change the consistency of the powder. Yeah. And okay. also the reason why I didn't do your face yet, everybody, is because when you apply powders or makeup, things drop. Right. And so if you've done your foundation and your concealer and you're all done and it looks great, right. and now you go to put your eyes on and you just make a mess of everything you've done. Right. I'd rather you finish your eyes. Don't worry about things right. sprinkling under your eyes. You'll clean it at the end. Again, I'm not going to have to repeat this with Guadalupe again. Right. This is about just teaching you about a hooded eye right now right. and quick trips to get done. But no, there are no tips. rules. Laura always says the same. There's no rules to make up. So any order that you want to do this in, this is just the preferred order, but it doesn't really matter. Right. Okay. <coughs> okay. So, so I'm taking the scary the, dark one. <laughs> and you're going to go along your lid, along your lid, your whole lid, and you're oh. going to go pretty high up, Laura. You're Higher. Go okay. Pretty high, but not keep going, keep going. Ah. And, yeah. Did you, um, did you tap the excess off? I forgot. <laughs> okay, that's okay. So you can don't worry about what's sprinkling underneath. Please right. leave it, leave yeah. it, leave it, leave it. You don't have to okay. worry about Should it. Should I go higher than that? Uh, yes. Yes. I want yes. you to go past that crease bone and okay. bring it up to the top, not under the brow, but pretty, pretty high up there. Where you think you're having that issue with the hooded lid, you want to put this dark color right on that spot because that's what's going to solve your problem. Yeah. Okay. So if you got too heavy handed, now what you're going to do is you're going to take the French vanilla. Okay. And different right brush, there. same brush. Well, do you have another brush at this point that's full in that collection? I believe you do. Yes. This one here. Okay. okay Use great. that strictly going forward for French vanilla. Okay. Now take that French vanilla and use it at the edges. So going on top of where it ended, where it ends up like to your under your brow. Right. Oh, and, okay. and don't be afraid to massage it in, right. like really. Oh. You want to blend out that hard line that you create. Right. Oh, okay. Right. Oh, what's neat is your brushes always say what they're used for. That's right. That's right. Thank so you. So if you ever get confused, Laura Jean or Guadalupe or anyone watching, that's what I love about oh. your brushes is they say oh, what they're used for. Yeah. So you keep blending the edges, you know, don't be afraid, not just under the brow, but that edge of that brown line. Because what you want to do is make sure your shadows are seamless from one to the other. People don't need to see where you began and ended, okay? How's but that? Explain, that's very good. That looks good. Excellent. I like that. Okay. The idea is, always remember this, light brings forward, dark detracts. It's the first thing I learned in theater and film makeup school, Chiato Scudo. That is good, that Italian so word. that Italian word of light and dark. When you have a hooded lid, it means it's protruding and it's coming over your eyelid to your lash line. You wanna flatten the look of it. So you don't wanna put light colors on your eyelid. You wanna put muted, it doesn't have to be brown. It could be purples, it could be anything that your heart desires as long as it's muted. Now. I am actually, I'm gonna, for purposes of time, I'm gonna uh, let Laura keep working and I'm gonna start to tell her what's gonna happen next. And this way she can keep working on her other eye without me standing here watching. And I don't want anybody to check out and get bored because this could take time. But also to say that, you know, you, you, I'll see when it's all said and done what you need to fix. So don't worry about that, Laura, and don't worry about that Guadalupe. We'll take a look at it at the end. Um, but this is definitely my attempt at teaching you how to get your eyes open. Are you done with both eyes? I think so. Okay, let me see. Excellent. Yeah, you did a great job. Excellent. Oh, good, okay. okay. So now we're gonna go to liner. And I've given you um, uh, something we call Kajal. Now Kajals, people are gonna look at and go, are you crazy? It's, a, it's an eyeliner pencil. There is a sharpener on the other side. They are the most waterproof pencil you will ever try in your whole entire mm -hmm. life. 
Um, to me, that's worth it, even if it means that it's a little thicker. The idea behind the Kajal pencil is that I don't care about you being perfectly precise and having that thin, tight line. I just want you to use black right now. If you can imagine black. Okay, Laura, you're going to use black. Now, in your own life, you may say, I'm never doing black again. I just want to do the other colors, which are bronzy and lighter. But if you can, what you're going to do, and I'm going to take the black and- Right, and Sharon, I think you had the eyeliner question. This is, this is what you should pay attention to. Okay, so that's, I'll use this one. Um, so what you're going to do is you're going to be looking into your mirror and you're looking down typically into your mirror and hopefully your mirror is close to you. I think it is Laura elbow on the table, elbow on the table, and you're going to start from the outer and you're going to hold it and you're going to go along your lash line thicker on the, just a little thicker out here. And as you come in a little thinner. And the way to create thicker and thinner is the pressure of the pencil on your eye. Lighten it up when you get into the center of your eye and your line will get thinner. So that's from the outer to the inner. I like that because if you deposit too much, it belongs out here, right. not in here. Right. So outer to inner. And you don't always have to go one line across. It could be that you stop and then go back and add, you know, go back to it because some. Well, I want to go all the way to the inner part of my. Not all down here, in. no, not okay. in here. You're going to like the first short lash of your eye. That's okay. it. So you're not bringing it all the way down to that inside corner. You're staying away from there. And okay. How's that? Uh, let me see. Let me see. Great. Excellent. That looks really good. Really yeah. Excellent. Okay. Excellent. And you could work on the other eye while I'm talking. So the okay. idea behind black, you guys, and I think I can't remember who it was that asked such a good question about eye lining. Um, and it made her lashes look like they might be Sharon. shorter. Sharon. Sharon, Sharon. Sharon. Yeah. So Sharon, to Sharon's point, if you want, you can, there's a sharpener on here. When you first get these pencils, they're more pointed. So you can get that precision. Or if you have a pencil at home now, I don't care. The reason for black is if you get it really close to your base of your lashes, it will make your lashes look fuller. So you don't need to labor over putting a lot of mascara yes. on because the darker it is, so it could be dark brown, I don't care, dark green, it could be a dark, dark navy. As long as it's deep in color, it's gonna make your lashes look fuller right. and it's gonna bring back shape. So someone with a hooded eye, we used to do events and our events, people would come in and go, well, I don't wear liner on top because I have a hooded eye and you can't see my liner anyway. And I'd say, that's especially why you need to wear liner across the top because you've lost that shape. It's softened because of the hooded lid. You've got to put it back in. Mm -hmm. So you can't really ignore putting it on. Okay, let's go to the bottom line. Uh, you have a pencil there called maybe antique bronze or gilded bronze. I can't remember what, I don't have my list in front of me. Um, I have uh, antique bronze and smoky quartz coal, uh, coal Good. and midnight blue. Okay, so take antique bronze, okay. okay. And by the way, everybody, I know you didn't, not everybody has this only Guadalupe and Laura and Barbara does, but so sorry for that. But that um, smoky quartz, when I'm doing the lazy girl guide to makeup and I'm in a hurry, mm -hmm. I'm gonna tell you something, that's my shadow stick too. It is. I put it on my whole lid. I use my finger to blend out the edge so you don't see where it ends. And, and then I do my liner, my black and my, and then I take the same smoky quartz underneath and I'm done with my eyes altogether. Mm -hmm. That's when I don't feel like brushes and eyeshadows. Right. Okay, Laura, what you're gonna do is you're gonna go from the outside, you're gonna meet it to the top where the black is, okay? okay. So you're gonna take the liner, meet it where the black ended, okay? And you're gonna come in, in towards your nose, in towards your nose, getting as close to the inside of your eye, but not inside, but it could go, it wouldn't hurt your eye, but you're gonna go thinner in here, and thicker as you get to the outside corner. So what Laura is saying is you're going thinner. to flip the image from the top. So again, you have the thicker on the outer corner, the thicker on the outer corner, top and bottom. And as you go into the center of your eye, it gets thinner and use the pressure of the pencil to create that thickness or thinness. Right. Okay. Oh, I think I did too much. Did I do too much? No. Yeah, she did a you little did? bit. Yeah. I like it. Okay. Oh, come back to me. Talk to me and let me see you back. Let me see. Let me, Laura, say something so I could see you. Oh, back. oh, can you guys hear me? Oh, that's right. Okay. So yeah. Your, your left eye looks a little heavier underneath, right? 
So okay. if you didn't, if you don't have a sponge, um, like one of those um, throwaway sponges, take don't. that. Oh, you don't have. Take the angled brush that's in that brush kit mm-hmm. right that's now. Right, right. That's oh, this guy. Yep, yeah, that guy. Okay. And go right over it, and it will soften it and make it look less heavy. That's going to be what cleans up the bottom of your eye. Okay. Okay. And remember. Right now you're looking all eyes because you have no blush on, you have no foundation, you have no lip color. So when you look at your eyes and you're making up like this, it could be like, oh no, that's too much eye makeup. You've got to wait till you balance all those other features to really have judgment about whether you went too heavy. How's how's that? Let me see, let me see. Better, it's still that you have much more on the lower lash. Did you not do the other eye yet? No, not yet. I'll do the other eye. Okay, so now do the other eye. And by the way, Laura, I don't even care if it was a little heavy today, because the next day you do it, you'll have a lighter touch, you know? Oh, okay. So this could be like an evening look, maybe? That could be more of an evening look, absolutely. We'll determine when we're all done, if this work suits you, because it's your lifestyle, Laura. I don't live in your life, right? You have to go, Laura, I would never walk like this. And while while we're doing, what we're doing is, uh, Lupe is going ahead and she's putting on the base so that we can um, move that's over to awesome. Lupe here in just a few minutes. Yeah, um, I, that's great. Yeah. And I'll tell, I'll, I'll actually tell Lupe what to be using on her lips. She's doing the French vanilla, right? So for Lupe, I'm going to recommend that for Lupe's eyelid, this is a gorgeous color. Yeah, that was a pretty. Is this, I, my, my readers aren't, Cherry Mill? Cherry Hill. Cherry Hill. Cherry Hill in the Central Park this beautiful russet color, this mm-hmm. color, that's gonna be your color that you put on next after French vanilla. But in these palettes, you have colors like French vanilla. So if anybody's interested in picking up this three set piece set today, and let's say just wanna get that, there's highlighter in here and blush in here and colors that can do eyebrow and eyeliner. Right. There's so many choices. So um, many. And I love Laura that you can actually blend together like you could take one palette and another palette and blend the colors so now you've got you know you have 12 colors really unlimited, to make them blend unlimited, with unlimited combinations honestly. yeah unlimited and thank you by the way i'm reading your comments so i appreciate <laughs> it okay laura all right i'm let here me, let me see okay the okay. next thing, now laura your brows are pretty good okay so i would tell you do you typically wear brow color laura no i've never and yes. i've I, I kind of want to. <laughs> I don't need to. I, I, I honestly don't think you need to. Okay. Um, let's skip that for a minute. And what I'm going to ask you to do is to work on the mascara. We have a brand new mascara that we just launched that you should have called Love Your Body. Um, I did not get mascara. Oh, no? I'm so sorry. Okay. Do you guys own mascara? I do. Um, I don't know it is. Because I'm not, it's, trust me when I tell you, I don't care who's you're using. So next thing, do you have a lot of powder spillage from underneath on your eyes, on your face, underneath here? Um, yes, I do. Okay. Do you happen to have, I would always tell somebody to have those wipes, those cleansing wipes that you can take. If no, you, but I have like a little tissue. Can I use uh-oh. that? Okay. I put a little spackle on that tissue, a little of that champagne right. glow oh, okay. under makeup arm. It'll lift it. Yes. And the purpose of that champagne spackle is it gives you a slip to your skin so that when you go to put concealer on, right. girlfriends, you should not be putting concealer on without first putting on a little bit of spackle or any under makeup primer. I don't care if it's mine because it gives your skin a basically a second skin so that when you go to put concealers, foundations, blushers, they go on top of a smooth, even surface. Our skin is dry in some places, oily in others, or completely dehydrated. The purpose of under makeup primer and what's different about it than moisturizer is Mm -hmm. really that it doesn't penetrate the skin. So it creates this second skin that hovers on the skin so that when you go to put makeup on, you need less makeup and your makeup doesn't penetrate as quickly. And it doesn't crease, right? You won't see those creases? Okay. The creasing and cracking on the skin. It won't. And Laura and... Oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, a good concealer, like that lower concealer, doesn't really dry down. Right. So part of that is that it doesn't settle into lines and wrinkles. Which okay. Is Correct. Correct. So one of the questions Dina had asked, how close to the nose does the eyeshadow go? 
Eyeshadow oh. or eyeliner? Eyeshadow? Oh, I think she said eyeshadow, maybe eyeliner. Both, both. I'll just go okay. with that answer. Um, I take it and I, I basically go to where your first lash is. So if you're looking at mirror that you could see your first lash because they're typically short, everything needs to end around there. I okay. don't go on the nose, on the bridge of the nose. Nothing is on the bridge of the nose. So really, if you hold your brush up, straight out from the outside of your nose. Everything should be right after it. Right, got not it. Inside, not in the bridge of the nose. Nothing should touch. It doesn't matter if French vanilla touches that because that just lightens right. it. But nothing dark should go on, be touching the bridge of the nose. It's outside of it. Just feel for your eyelid and you're okay. Great. Okay. So um, concealers next, Laura. And this concealer, everybody, will cover tattoos. This is a little dab will do you. And I'm not even kidding. Johnny's favorite, I'm just gonna tell you. Yeah, it's called Real Deal Advanced. We used to have it, it was drier when we had it before it had a little bit less slip and a lot of women had an issue with that. Mm -hmm. As makeup artists, we loved it because we knew how to heat it up and mix it up. But now we've made it so that, and by the way, all our products are free of paraben now, everything that we're working on. So really good for you ingredients. When you open this up, okay, the orifice is pretty small. You need very little. I like to take concealer and put it on the back of my hand like that. I never take it and put it directly under my eye. Some people like using concealer brushes, foundation brushes on the Lazy Girl Guide to Makeup. And I'm going to tell you, I go like this. I warm it up on the back of my hand using my ring finger. You can see already how opaque this is. There's so much coverage in here. You actually could use this and just blend it out and be done with your makeup if you wanted to just put that on and not even wear a foundation. And you're gonna start on the inside of the eye. I'm actually gonna put it on top of what I've got, I don't care. And you're gonna come really close to the edge of your liner that you did. Not okay. over the liner, obviously, but really close. And you're gonna work out, but you're not gonna come out to where your lines and wrinkles and creases. I want you all to notice, Laura, do that again. I want you all to notice Laura's application. See that she's tapping that underneath her eye and she's not swiping it across. You don't want to thin out the concealer and you don't oh. want to ever, ever, ever pull underneath your eye. Yeah, that ring so, finger. Okay. The, ring, the finger. ring finger, which is a lighter touch. And you want to just tap across back and forth and you'll get full coverage and it'll blend beautifully. Yeah, and when you tap it also, like Johnny said, it's stippling it. Yes. When you go like this, you're wiping it off, you're wiping it off. You wanna get that coverage. So that's why some people prefer a brush. I think I get the heat of my finger warms it up. Let me see how it looks when you're done, Laura. Right. And this okay. is an error. If you're not getting a good blend, all it means is that you use too much. Yeah. Okay. So let me see, keep talking. All okay. right, what do you oh, think? Looks yeah, it looks good. Yeah. Looks good. So far, so good. Yeah. Yeah. One other okay. little tip I wanna quickly share. Again, Guadalupe, I'm sorry, but these all will apply to you. Let's say you did your eye makeup and you came out too far here, mm -hmm. or you came down. That's always an issue I have. I see a lot of women, they put their shadow on and somehow I see it come down out here. Right. Mm -hmm. I'll use what's left on my finger or I'll use a sponge and I swipe up with what's left on my finger okay. and I swipe up so everything looks like mm -hmm. it's going up. Oh, right. because so, I feel like my eyes are drooping anyway, so. Like there's too much shadow that's lower in here. That way, if you clean it up, okay. like Laura said, and you create an upsweep. You're creating an upsweep. And oh, it's gonna okay. Beyond. You're gonna get, exactly, you'll get right rid of it. And that's one of the best tricks of all is it's going to outline your eye makeup and really highlight your eye even more. I don't know if okay. you can see what you just did, Laura, but that looks so much better. What you better. just did looks so oh, much better. Oh, it does. Oh, it just changed it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I like going, this one, yeah. And don't be afraid, you could change your finger just right from the liner edge to the shadow. It'll wipe away anything you did right. that would came oh, out. Right. Okay. Don't be afraid to get rid of that. Don't be afraid. Yeah. Okay. Just need, I don't need to get all the tissues, but I'm okay for now. Um, okay, you got your other eye. Okay, then if you wanted to, for girlfriends watching, you could take that concealer and just blend lightly. It's good enough for the face right. if you wanted to. But I gave you something called double take foundation. Double take foundation, when you open it up, the, there's a, always a sponge lodged in the bottom here, okay? It should look like this when you first open up double take. There's pink on one side, white on the okay. other. Got it. And it's usually, there you go. Okay. I use the pink side 
and I just dip it right in. Now I'm not showing you my, my sponge. I'm telling you, when I say lazy girl guide to me, <laughs> if you think I'm taking time to wash out my sponges, no. I don't even have time for that. No, over and over again. Don't I'm worry being about honest. It. Like, you know, you can sit here and listen to me. Wash out your sponge three times a week, <laughs> once a week, and go to the I just wipe it right on my face. Okay. On the pink, on the pink side? I use the pink side, and I'll tell you why in a second. Okay. Side. Um, this okay. is double take gals. I'm not going to go into a whole spiel. If you ever want to understand, um, what this is, you can go on to QVC, write in double take foundation by Laura Geller, and you'll see a, a full video of how to use it and application. Um, okay. these are all of my, most of my foundations are baked in Italy and made by artisans and they're baked on pure terracotta tiles. This is what sets us apart. They're literally oh authentic. They're made in Italy. Um, and they start their lives as creams and they're baked for 24 hours. So you right. need very little. They're pure pigment. They're amazing. This particular foundation is the most maximum coverage. So if you were to use the sponge that you're doing now, Laura, you'll get yeah. maximum coverage. If you use kabuki brush or big fluffy brush that comes in that brush kit, because yep. you could use a big fluffy brush too, like this. Okay. So either of these. Yeah. This is just that it's a portable brush, and I love it because you could take it with you, put a little oh, foundation on. I it. love portable stuff. Yeah. I can tell you already that looks really beautiful, and now you're going to start to see how much sense your eye makeup looks. Yeah. You've done the whole camp. Yeah, it's starting to come together. It looks when you don't have foundation or concealer on, your eye makeup will always look heavier. But you could take that kabuki brush and you could dip it into the double take foundation, and then you'll get a lighter finish, and you're you're good to go. It depends okay. on coverage one needs. Right. I have like severe hyperpigmentation. So I recommended double take because I'm partial to needing coverage. And then if you have areas of your face that maybe have a, a sunspot or pigmentation, stipple it on, like tap the brush onto that area with a little more product. You don't always have to go over your whole face. Right. So if you have a little bit of wrinkles, maybe do wrinkles like, like, you know, like maybe the little 11s here or on your forehead or somewhere on the eyes, will this help cover it a little bit? No, no. no. Oh, Make no. Okay. Wrinkles, nothing okay. covers wrinkles. Okay. Um, so forget it. You know, never, never mind. Okay. Own them. <laughs> we have a right to them. <laughs> we do. If you don't like them, go get no. Botox like I did <laughs> yesterday. It's okay. Ah, okay. Uh, we have a question coming in. As we wrap up, Laura Jean, and then what we did is we, um, we've we had Lupe go ahead and start applying some of her Good. things. She had a few areas that she wanted to learn about. Good. And so why don't we have Laura Jean finish um, as we go, and we're going to bring Lupe on, and we can walk through a few things that Lupe would like to do. And here's a question. Do you recommend foundation daily? I tend to like wearing it daily, especially with a mask. A hundred thousand percent. And this is why yes. I love the baked because it's not creamy or greasy. So when you wear a mask, you're never going to get those lines and you're never going to feel like, oh. it's, yeah, I much prefer uh, something that's powdery or baked than a cream or liquid. Uh, Laura, while I go to Guadalupe, yeah, what, yep. Lupe, um, yep. yeah Lupe's fine. And get your mascara and do all that. And you know, lipstick is lipstick. When I get to Lupe, and do blush, you'll follow along. Okay, I'll follow along with the blush. I'm gonna go get my mascara right go now. Ahead. Go right okay. ahead. And let me then, when you're done, um, Laura G, we yeah. want you to put your hair down so we can okay. get the blush. Yeah, <laughs> I'll, I'll, get all, yeah. <laughs> I'll be right back. Okay, so, so, so I went ahead on. and already applied the, the vanilla, and then I took and applied the, the cherry hill that you had me do. Beautiful. And then I was just going through and I already did the top lid. On okay. both eyes. The black. I don't think she needs the black. Anything. She really, it's not it me. You look great with, yeah. you don't need more shadows. That one shadow is fine. You don't need to put anything in the crease. Beautiful. Anything. Yeah. And and I will also tell you that you can wet those shadows and you'll get a whole nother foiled oh, effect. Wow. Are so Love that. Okay. Y'all thought so of everything with your makeup. <laughs> Um, cause you're going to both you and Laura Jean are going to end up putting blush across your lids after you're all done. Yeah. And so even if you made a mistake on your shadows, the blush is going to fix it. And I'll explain that in a minute. Let me see your liner Lupe. So you did the black across the top, right? Uh -huh. You have to speak Laura, uh, uh, Guadalupe oh, yes. so they yes. can see. Yeah. I went ahead and I put black across the top. You know, what I typically struggle is my eyes are pretty lot like almond shaped. And so I struggle figuring out how far I go out on the lid here. 
Mm-hmm. Um, okay. and, it, and sometimes I end up going higher this way. So I don't know if I just go straight across same yeah, length. You know, here's what everybody needs to know. When you end your liner, it's you're ending at your last lash, okay? And like Johnny okay. and I both said, it's thicker at the outer and always thinner in the inner. When I look at your eyes right now, Lupe, they look the same. I don't see it thicker on the outer. So you could be adding more to the outside of your eyes, thickening it up a little bit. And where it ends is that last lash. And I'll tell you the trick, girlfriends. Right, but Lupe, also know that if you you extend a little bit higher, it's better. Higher is better. So is this high enough on this side versus I fixed it a little bit? Yes, much better, better. better. much better. So then let me do the other eye. Okay, you do the other eye. The, you know, really remember, you know, I, I'm not walking in your shoes every day. And I'm going to tell you something. The way I'm made up today is not how I go out every day. I told you before that, like, if, especially in this pandemic, if I'm not doing work, if I'm not on a Zoom call, if I'm taking my new puppy <laughs> for a walk, I'm going to put on just a, that smoky quartz uh, eye cajal pencil or one of these soft colors across my lid fast with the liner, fast with the underliner, some mascara and be done. You know, you're going to, I'm just teaching tips and tricks today. Incorporate it to what you always do. Let me see how you look. Fantastic. Okay. okay. So here's both eyes now. Okay, good. good. Okay. Go to your um, other color for under your lower lashes. Okay. While she's doing that, we have a question coming in. What is the difference between concealer and foundation? And do you have to use both? Uh, okay. So if you are somebody who doesn't have dark circles um, and you really don't look terrible under your eyes, you can just put foundation up under your eyes okay. um, because it may give you enough coverage. Concealer is, has more opacity. Yes. It has more coverage than foundations will typically have. It typically is a cream or a putty type texture where foundations can be anything from creams, liquids, CCs, BBs, baked. I mean, there's so many different formulations of foundation. So I like to put concealer first, clean up under the eye, especially if anything mm-hmm. sprinkled. I like to use the creaminess of a concealer to angle and shape that outer part of the eye where maybe you took your shadows the wrong way. And so I want you to do that, um, Lupe also. Okay. It's important to put that cream under your eye if your foundation is a powder, I strongly recommend not putting that under your eye because it's only going to accentuate yeah. the lines of makeup. That's right. What so color, Laura, did you color. want me to, to put it underneath the eye? Um, you, you have antique bronze? Or- <coughs> I have antique. My color looks lovely on your lid. Yeah, it's such a pretty color. It looks natural. It oh, does it? No, I don't have the antique. I have dark brown, midnight blue. Oh, uh, my apologies. I do have antique bronze. Okay. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to start it where your black ended. So right where your black ended, you're going to take your pencil and you're going to work coming in, getting really close under those legs and work on top of the leg. Make like the lashes don't exist. If you guys try to put liner on and make like you're getting under your lash, you'll never get an even line. Forget your lashes. Go right on top of it um, and work to the first lash. Okay, we have a question about puffy eyes. How in the heck do you cover up puffy eyes and how do they do it for Oprah? My girl, Oprah. Like, what are they doing? Yeah, puffy under eyes. Good lighting. Well, good, <laughs> for Oprah. For Oprah. Okay. Yeah, lighting. if we could all carry a ring light around with us, we'd be in good shape. Right. Um, really, the truth, the truth to that is never use a concealer that's too light. Match it to your skin tone. Yes, it's true. Oh. You put on something light under your eyes. Remember my theory, and it goes for clothing too. Light brings forward, dark detracts. Right. So the darker ah. it is, the more muted it is. You can't lighten up under. And by the way, puffy eye people who have under eye puffs don't have dark circles. Right. So they typically don't even need right. concealer. Concealer would just be to even out the discoloration right. if there's redness or veins on there. But typically you would just use what you would put on your face, the same color under your eyes. And puffy eyes are a, a usually worst in the morning. So if you have that advantage, if you're waiting an hour or two, it'll they'll go down a little bit. Ice. Nice. Can say ice. Cold spoons. Ice. 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 Cold spoons. Let me just natural. Let's see, Lupe. Okay. <laughs> so let's see. So this is what I was. Which eye did you do? Your right or left? I can barely I did my see. My right. You did your right. Come close. Keep talking. Keep talking. I keep yeah. talking. Uh-huh. Okay. okay. Let me see you. I'm seeing Barbara. So, 
I was, uh, yeah, I went ahead and put just the, the dark and the, or the, uh, the bronze on this one. That's really okay. Pretty. It's very pretty. I would come in a little bit more emphasis to, okay. I see it stopping in the middle a little bit on your eye. So bring it all the way into the, the way into your first lash. Okay. I don't, I think a lot of women used to stop in the middle because they thought it would make their eyes come close together or make their eyes smaller. What happens is my eye goes right to where it stops. And that's the only thing I see is that right. you stopped it there. So it needs to get thinner as you come in, but it should be a gradual gradation of thin to thickness. Mm -hmm. So when you're, when you're talking about your three E's and doing your eyes being one of them, your eyeliner, are you talking upper lower or just simply the uppers if you're in a hurry? Yeah, for sure. Here, uppers, okay. the, no matter what, never forget that. But <laughs> I do believe the whole circumference, but if you're in a hurry, you're running to like I said, whatever the quick route you're taking, you don't have to do the lower lashes. I'm gonna I keep your keep it simple. But for two extra seconds, putting a little something under your eye and not being precise in the line there. I don't want you to be precise. I want it soft and smoky underneath right. the eye. Listen, looking good is the ultimate every day for all of us. Yeah. So take that extra minute and put the liner all over the way down. Yeah. You know, I'm not giving you a pass on that. Okay. I love that beauty. I want to look at my best every Let me day. See, Luke, eh? Okay. Is this better or even more now? Much better. No, that great. Better? Okay. That great, what a nice. difference. Yeah. What a difference. <laughs> Thumbs up. Okay. You do you have, so you'll work on your other eye while I keep yes. talking. You okay. got it. Let me go to Laura for a quick second. Laura, got let me you put mascara on. Okay, I've got the mascara on. What a difference. Look into your camera, Laura, straight into your camera, not the yeah, into camera. the lip. Yeah, let me see into the camera. Talk Can to you guys me. see? Am I looking into the camera now? Yes, yeah, and, and then keep talking. And you okay, and then keep talking. Okay. So okay. what do you guys think of them? The mascara is good. I think and I didn't put too much on the bottom lid because I, I don't know. Someone said it, it, it heavies your eye, make your eye heavy. Is that true? Should I yeah. put more on the bottom lid? I mean, the bottom lashes? Um, I like putting mascara on the lower lash yeah. to the point that I actually see the lash. Yeah. It's not okay. bad. Your liner is a little thick for me on okay. your lower lashes. And the okay. way to really clean that, and it's hard now because I don't have um, a sponge in front of me to I'll show you. Wait, I have. Oh, you do? Yeah. I'm going to show you. Okay. You can buy them in the drugstore. They're like disposable sponges with the right shape that if you went too thick with your bottom line. Okay because the bottom line on you, because you tend to droop a little bit, yep, yep. is what you're gonna do. So this is this kind of sponge. We all know them and love yep. them from the old mm -hmm. days, right? Uh -huh. <clears throat> you get a couple uses out of each one, you buy them in a bag. What I need you to do, Laura, because your eyes tend to be a little droopy, yep. <laughs> is to make that line more straight across. It's, it's looking like it's coming down. Yeah, You could have a little concealer okay. on it like a drop of concealer blended in on the edge of the sponge. I'll show you what I mean. Okay. okay. Um, this is what I mean like that. Okay. Okay. And then you're going to take that concealer and okay. you're going to walk it across with the sponge and thin it out a little bit. You're too thick under your eyes. Right. Okay. Too thick. And it's not your fault. And I'll tell you why that eye Kajal is a thick crayon. Right. Okay. So, you know, I, I gave you a challenge. So okay. the tape that you have to like really focus on, it should be thicker than the outer corner and thinner in the center. And that graduation should just happen. So if you remember okay. that, you'll be fine. Yeah, it okay. won't be next So time. when you're putting it on, just maybe angle it a little bit and then go straight at the tip when you're yeah. coming yeah. in. So yeah. your, okay, left whatever. Eye, your left eye looks better than your right eye. This eye looks better? No, no the, other. the other one, yeah. That this one looks the better one. than this one. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So Lupe, let me see. Okay. You. Yes, I am back. How oh this? my God, that looks so great. That looks Beautiful so job. great. Great job. Lupe, keep talking for a minute. Yep. Okay. This is so much fun. I am okay. learning so much from you too. You, you, <laughs> I'm going to have you do mascara when we're all, when we're answering okay. other questions, moving on, because that's no, but nothing that let's, you can't do. do Lupe, Got it. That's what I wanted to get to. Yeah, so Lupe, your brows are pretty good, but I'd like to see okay. you fill them in a little bit more. <laughs> this is the Sculpton Stay. Um, it, you can see the tip is sort of uh, triangular. Huh? And then on the other side is a clear gel that keeps, that grooms them when you're done and keeps your brow color oh. uh, in place for hours and hours and hours. Mm -hmm. So this is, I think, this is, 
for everybody who's listening to this or you know going to do their brows it's personal right so yeah. again when you're doing any kind of liner brow eye line you want to have your elbow on a tabletop right you okay. always want your brow to start right from the outside of your nose straight up right okay and then you're gonna from the outside of your nose it should end right uh, like at an angle like this okay? corner of your eye most okay. of us lost our tail that's all fill in online i lost my tail um and so with short strokes lupe uh -huh. you're going to use this and just brush up in the front of your eye and create a more squared off thicker beginning to your brow Laura, this doesn't apply to you. I honestly, okay. you could play along with the taupe and add it just for the fun of it. Okay. And let's see what it looks like. But you don't, if uh, the lazy girl guy to makeup, when you don't need something, I'm going to give you a piss. And let's face it, okay. the most time consuming product you're going to use. You can't rush through your brows if you want them to look good. It just is. Oh. It. So this is the, everything else you can be real quick with. But brows to sculpt your brows and make them look great does take a minute or two. It takes a minute or two. It does. So, Lupe, okay. let me see you talk while you're doing yeah. it. Yeah. So, I you're am doing great. in right now. Yep. You're doing great. And work on top of your brow as you're working toward okay. the outside. When you work on top of the brow, girlfriends, you're giving an eye lift to your eye mm -hmm. when you're using a pencil or a powder, any yes. applicator that you're using. It opens your eye. So question, so do you just go all the way across? Do you do your little arc at the top or how do yep. you? Yes. I do. So okay. I take, I'm going to work along with you and okay. I take the pencil and I uh -huh. do thicker here. Okay. And I'm creating, then I work, walk across yep. at the top. Okay. And I bring it up a little higher, a little okay. higher to create that arch, right? And then I turn it on its side, the pencil, so that it, it becomes one line. Okay. In other words, so it becomes a little thinner, turn it on its side, and I come out. Um, I'm doing it heavy so that everybody could see. And there's your angle, right? Ah, so, okay. Right. So you're doing, you're doing great. And when you work on top, you're heightening your eye. I think a lot of women will take the brow color and do it underneath their, their brow. No. And you're actually bringing down right. your brow when you do that. Right. And always okay. after every brow product, take a dry spool, even dry mascara brush, or like the one we have on the other end, um, or even with a, and comb through it. It just helps the, pro it helps, helps distribute the products, even and out, look more natural. Exactly. And at the beginning, should we, you know, do this first to get the brow in, you know, I already did my brows, but do we do this first and then oh, do perfect. the lining? Yeah, it never it hurts. Matter that yeah. it's a great little tip why not um but it would have to be a dry like yours is yeah, yeah got a, it. Dry, a dry brush the only thing is when you poke it when you bring it up don't leave it like that bring it back down because you're not going to apply your brow oh um, yeah and then yeah line it like this bring it back down what yeah. is this i never knew is this for um is that supposed to be for uh okay if you get clumps is that what this is for yeah that's what that's for I always and, I, wondered. and okay. i love that and i use that by the way because i think all of us are in a hurry when we put mascara on and inevitably your lashes are clumping together and you yeah. really should separate them so do use that when you have the time take your time and, and separate yeah, your lashes sure. so as they're doing this for people um like myself and others that wear falsies or even half falsies i have halves on today um, do you recommend putting the mascara on first and then the lash or mascara or, or the lash and then mascara? I, I, like to, I like to put a little mascara on first because when you put the lash on top of that, the mascara will hold it in place. It'll prevent it from drooping. Oh, stiffer with the mascara on it. They're not so soft. They're a little beefier. And then you can take the lash and sort of press it together like this with the oh. mascara and it'll melt. There you oh. go. Press, press. Beautiful. Okay. Okay. Right. okay. So how do these look or do I need to go thicker? Okay. What did, what did you do? I did the, uh, the, the, uh, oh, eyebrows. Wow. Let me see. Yeah. Turn, look straight into the camera, straight on. Okay. And yep. And talk to me. See, okay. So I did I do both. It looks fabulous. Yeah. Yes. Plus, 
fabulous. Yay. Did you brush through them? <laughs> I love this color on how it looks. That's what's something that I always struggle with is like, do you go as dark as your eye, you know, the, the hair color of your eyebrow or do you go a little lighter? I like that this one isn't she's super dark, but it blends really well. Okay, hair color, match your hair. And Laura, let me take a look at you real quick. Okay. What have you done? Well, I I put more concealer up here. I try to get rid of it. And then I realized, I just listened to what you were saying and I, it just kind of clicked on me right now. You said, pretend that you're, and I wasn't doing that. Pretend that your lashes aren't there and just go over them. And I didn't, I went under. Uh -huh. That is the best uh -huh. tip. Yeah, like that's right. the aha moment of the, of the right now. This is, that's the best. That's how much better that looks. Yeah. And it looks so good right now. Yeah, I yeah. think I, you know, a lot of women do what you do. They try to take that. I go underneath and the mask creating, no. but go oh, right over your lashes. Right. Okay. And it looks really good. And you've done a little brow on yourself, Laura? I did. I tried it. <laughs> no, it's good. It's a good filler. And it, it okay. actually, you're not, you don't need to worry about adding more. What you need to do is know that when you put a little more on, it just makes them look more enhanced. And more groomed, especially right. when you take the other side with the um, gel to mm -hmm. take them and brush them the same, right. so that they look more groomed. Well, the gel, the gel sets them then, right? Gel sets yeah. them. So because sometimes my lash, one, the lash on this side or the um, wow. brow will fall down by the end of the day. It's like already down. I brush it up. Brush okay. it up. The gel, <laughs> hold it the gel will hold okay. it in place and brush it up. Okay. So and I put on the 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 what is this? Laura, put your lipstick on. So well, is this evenly distributed for you? Oh, that, that looks good, good Lupe. Really yeah. good. Okay. I'm really impressed. <laughs> yes. And the eager beaver student over here. <laughs> okay. Well, I want Lupe and Laura to get their lipstick on. I don't care which way you do it, but I am going to, while you're doing it, I'm going to share a tip with everybody that's important to me. And my makeup artist friend, is it Stephanie? I think would agree with this. When I started this conversation today, I said to you that, the most important thing to think about when you're doing your own um, face makeup, eye makeup, lips, everything, is to own your own look. Don't try to look like somebody on YouTube. Don't try to look like anybody instructing you. Just own your own look. What I told you was you're doing eyes to bring out shape, create opening. That's the mascara. The liner is giving it the shape. The brow is giving it the filling, you know, the, the, the whole, um, like framing, would mm -hmm. you hang up yes. a picture on the wall with the thumbtack? No, you would mat it and frame it so that your picture looks more important. That's what the brow does. It's the same with lip. If you could take your time and put lipstick on, um, and, or use a lip pencil and frame out the shape of your mouth, especially because after 40, our lips soften and we start to lose the volume in our lips. I love a lip liner. It's not, it's, I am the lazy girl to make, guide to makeup. So I'm going to tell you, you don't have to do it every day, but when you care about how your lips look or want them to look fuller, take the lip liner and do it after your lipstick yeah. because it will sculpt it around your mouth and give you shape. Oh, now, I love I'm, that. I I question on that, Laura. So question right. on that one. So how, how do you match your lip liner to your lipstick? Is it, do you go lighter it, to darker deeper. or how does that work? Same family and a little deeper than the color of your lips. And by the way, Johnny says lip liner every day. Same way like <laughs> eyeliner every day. Again, that's what I like. Yeah. I mean, I just think that that finished polished look is something that you shouldn't sell yourself short. Oh, yeah. okay. And you're both putting on a new lipstick in our range called Smart Pout. Um, yes. It is a um, non-transferable lipstick. Um, you could see it doesn't come off. Oh, I love it. So I love that. My mask wearing girlfriend. She's so cute, isn't she? I love your enthusiasm for the mask wearing <laughs> girlfriends that have had to forfeit wearing lipsticks because when you took your mask off, it made a horrible mess. You can now put Smart Pout on. I would always tell you to wait 30 minutes, um, let it set, and then go ahead and put your mask on. You will not have to worry anymore about your lips with saving. Oh that, my God, this is going to be music to my the ears, best. Laura. I love that. <laughs> It's a huge game changer. That's what I'm going to tell you. I mean, I wanted to launch this uh, when the pandemic started, but my product developer was working very closely with um, the team to make sure that it had all the right ingredients right. so that it felt hydrated. Because some right. of those non transferred as my son in the background, sorry, ignore him. Hello. <laughs> We've seen him a couple of times. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah he, he gets up late and goes oh, out wow. for his bagel at one o'clock right, in the right. afternoon. <laughs> 
<laughs> You're speaking um, like a true mom because I know my I was talking about that on my son too. <laughs> like, uh, will you get up anytime soon? And it's lunchtime. It's you don't have to think bagel. Okay. So I want to go to blush real quick because we're over time and I want to just teach everybody real quick about blush. And this is going to be the final step. So blush, using a blush brush, you don't want anything terribly thick. This blush brush is angled and I love it because it comes in this collection and I love that it's angled. This is pink buttercream. You both should have that color. And I have apricot berry. Oh, oh right, no, berry, right. Yes. Apricot berry we chose that for you, Lupe. It's gonna look great mm -hmm. with those lips. We we color coordinated everything right. for each of you. Like Laura, you're cooler. Have, um, oh, uh, marbleized this one? It's called pink buttercream. That is oh, okay. Again, okay. baked in Italy on pure terracotta, six wow. pigments. Each one has six different pigments. You're gonna dip your brush in. You're gonna start from the top of your cheekbone because if you put too much on, always tap your excess. But if you put too much on your brush, the mistake will happen back here and not right here. So always start on the cheekbone and come along the cheekbone, but stop before you get to that nasal labial fold. Mm -hmm. Do not come past it. So apple of the cheek is where it stops. So along the cheekbone, apple of the cheek is where it ends. Along the cheekbone, apple of the cheek. And if you're not confident about the amount of product you use, here's a tip for you. Dip your brush into that foundation. Oh. And then into the blush and it'll soften the blush so that you can get started and know the appropriate amount to use. I wouldn't do that. No, no. Nope. <laughs> because I wouldn't because I'm the lazy girl guy. He's giving you extra tips. I'm like, just put the freaking blush on. And if you make a mistake- <laughs> He's still working at mistake, Inside Edition. Yeah. <laughs> you make a mistake all like this, okay? <laughs> and you pull it away. Um, so, but always, if you tap your excess off, chances are you won't have too much on your brush. So you go along the cheekbone, right? And then you bring a little bit up into the temple. So almost like an inverted V, like this, okay? Right, up into up by the hairline, like that. Not in the center, not down the front of the nose, not in the chin. Inverted okay. V, okay? You're sculpting your cheekbone. You're sculpting your cheekbone. Let me see. I don't think more. I've ever gone this high on the on the on top here. So that's actually a really neat. It trick. lifts your face up. It lifts yeah. your face. That's your Johnny. Is that, is that look okay? Yeah, it looks great. You did uh, your right side, Lupe. Yeah, on this side. Yeah, it looks amazing. It looks like you lifted your whole cheekbone. Awesome. And Laura, let me see you. Okay. Okay, you did both sides, right? I did both sides. Fabulous. Okay. Fabulous. It looks great. Your lip color looks amazing mm -hmm. on you. I and love now, this color. After I see Lupe and her other side. Yes. Remember. <laughs> okay. There yeah. you go. And one other, it looks amazing. Oh, it looks one great. other thing I'm going to share with you, if you're in a hurry and don't listen to Johnny <laughs> and you want to do the lazy girl guy to make up, now we're getting heated over here. <laughs> and you want to just get out of the house quick, smile when you're looking in the mirror and just put it on the apple of the cheek. Oh. This is what people oh. see when you're talking to them, minus the mask. Okay. The apple of your cheek. And, that, and you're looking for a healthy glow. The final tip to ending your makeup right now uh -huh. and to making your eye makeup match your blush, match your lip. Uh -huh. And this to me is everything. Yes. Is dipping your brush or using what's left on your brush into your blush right now. Okay. Uh -huh. And not too much, tap your excess, right? Okay. And you're gonna swipe it across your lid. Oh. And, and don't be afraid to add some pressure to it. Oh. And in, are you using the Kabuki brush, uh, Laura? I am. Should I not be using that? Oh, that's okay. yes, perfect. If you have the brush kit, you can use this brush, which comes with it. But um, I don't. I just have. I have this this kit here. But don't. Okay. Right. Don't uh, dip back into the blush. Just once should be enough to swipe over both eyes. Oh, you know? okay. So don't go. Okay. Right. Yeah. All right. I'm done. Okay. Uh, Woo! Oh, that oh, looks see? gorgeous. Color yeah. coordination. So what happens is the blush softens the edges of the eye makeup harmonizes your color on your cheeks to your eyes so you don't look like a block of color that's different here <laughs> to a block of color that's different here. Oh. It starts to pull it all together. Oh. Um, and like I said, you can use what's left on the brush after you were done with your blush. I typically just do that because I'm lazy, but you can add more blush color to your eye. And to me, you both look amazing. amazing. And the more you do it, the more you'll make it your own.
Oh, I love it, Laura and John. Oh, thank you so, so much. Beautiful. What amazing you know, great. And guidance. The idea is to look polished, not to see yes. makeup. And when I look okay. at you, Lupe, and when I look at you, Laura, I don't see what you've done. I just see polish. Right. You look yeah. coordinated. What we said in the beginning of this video that I said yeah. to the was when someone says to you, you look great, but I don't know why, you did a great job. Exactly. You don't want them to say how pretty is your makeup. You look great. I don't know why. Mm -hmm. You guys rock. Overstated. <laughs> That's so what I like. It's not overstated makeup. It's literally, it's simple and it's easy to apply. Um, and everything feels so buttery and it has a great scent to it. Yeah, it does. It, it has a it's beautiful. I'm telling you, if people don't, it's, we're still a sleeper brand and even though it's been around for a long time. And that's because our, it, you know, we're not distributed everywhere. The quality of these products are bar none, like nothing else you've ever, ever seen. I'm telling you. Yeah, I think it's great. And so what we wanted to do is I wanted to open it up. I had put in the chat here, ladies. We want to open it up to any questions you had. We did have Lori McFadden say that um, you could come back on screen and, and let's open it up for the last part of the Q&A. Sorry, I had my pup. She was, you know, hanging out. Um, so Laura McFadden, uh, and, and again, come back on screen. You had a question about brows, gore and gray brows, brows. Yes, <laughs> thank you. Hello, um, I, have, I have turned very gray and I was a great 80s girl that plucked my brows to the very fine pencil and now they will not grow back and the ones that are growing back are gray. Right. What do I do? Well, you need to absolutely use brow product on your brows. Do you not? I do, but I don't know what color to use because oh. everything that's out there is there it, it, like a dark brown or a dark black. And I'm like, well, my hair is gray. It's not those colors. I don't know oh, how to make it look like natural. You're right. So what you need is to use something that is called taupe, taupe right. um, or if it's another brand, because we actually don't have one that's per like that I would really say is perfect for your brow, or you can pick one up that says gray, um, because a lot of brands make them. You, you should be able to find that very easily. No, the new brow product, we have taupe. No, taupe we have. We, have taupe. we don't have gray. Right, we have but taupe. Uh, taupe typically works on gray, gray yeah, as well. I would well. like taupe on you. So Johnny would recommend our Sculpt and Stay in taupe. Right. Uh, Laura's holding it up. That's the color. Um, it's a pure taupe. And funny enough with our sculpt and stay, similar to other brands, the pressure you put when you apply it will allow it to go lighter or darker. So if you want it richer, you press a little harder. Right. Um, and so taupe would probably be a slam dunk for you, Laura. So I would give that a try first. And if it doesn't work, return it and get yourself something called gray. But don't forget your brows. It's so important. You know what I love? I love looking at Stephanie and Karen and people who have totally during this session have also applied their makeup. I this know. Is fantastic. Look at you look great. Yeah, everybody. I'm looking yeah. at I'm looking at everybody. Yeah, Dina, I, yeah, everybody. Wow. Yeah. Who did their makeup? Raise your hands. Stephanie before. and a little Dina, you did a little? Yeah, I did it before. Karen, I, I, Karen did you? Yes, okay. I did. Yeah. So I, I, love I, it. I thought, close in, but I did, did, and if I had to ask universally, it, was there any aha or was there any tip that you felt was important? So I know this will help me in my own edification. Yeah. Um, one I had was starting with the lipstick or whatever, and then putting the liner on. I thought that was a great tip. Okay. Good. You guys can all unmike. This is open. This is popcorning. We're going to popcorn it. Lupe, you're on mic. You're on mute, Lupe. <laughs> okay, I love the I love the application of the concealer with the finger versus you know like the whole rubbing, which I typically do or do with a brush. So I loved, and it eventually like it just felt a lot um, easier because I'm I'm wanting to be very careful about how much I tug at my bottom eyelid. Yes, yes. that's great. That's good. To so know. I just want to say again that honestly, I can't even tell you putting the eyeliner, pretending you don't have lashes, and putting it right over there was like huge. I'm going to tell everyone this. <laughs> no, I, no, I this never is, that is the biggest that. thing ever. Yeah. And I never yeah. mentioned that when I'm teaching and I, I, I did today for some reason. So thank you for that. Okay. 
Yeah. Stephanie, do you have anything you want to add? Is there anything, do you, would you say that your theory is similar to ours? I would say that my theory is really similar to yours. Um, a lot of the women that I work with, because I get people ready to be on camera too, um, are usually 40 plus. But one of the things I really loved was just how you layer the colors on top of each other. I think a lot of women get so caught up in like, where exactly do I place this product? Yeah. Well, and really okay. it's just, and one thing I try and teach is like, just get it on. You can always fix it and really trust the process. Because when you start doing something, you can be like, oh my gosh, this is feeling kind of crazy. And it's like, just trust the process. Just get it on. You can fix it. I promise in the end, it's going to be fabulous. It's true. Good point. So do we have any questions before we, we close out our wonderful session? with Laura, I love that everybody stayed. So they were really engaged. Thank you, Laura and Johnny. Um, what are some last minute questions or, or thoughts? I mean, one for me is when you wear glasses all the time, is there a way that we can make our eyes pop a little more? Do we accentuate, do we put more color on or what well, do we do? I mean, honestly, do you feel like when you put your glasses on that you no longer see the, the eye makeup? Is that something? Let me I feel see. like you, you miss seeing my eye color and my lashes and, you know. Yeah, I mean, if you feel that way, then I would say strictly intensify, yes. adding a little more shadow that yeah. the same exact color, okay. maybe playing up more mascara on the eye, maybe putting on a set of false lashes if you're going somewhere you really right. want to wear false lashes. You know, yeah. It's, yeah, there you go. Right. I've got uh, halvesies on. I'm just going to pull it off. It's, yeah, it's they're like halvesies. <laughs> yeah, we, we're, we both believe in, in false lashes and yeah, individuals. Sure. I just think it makes such well, a difference. Barbara, I have to tell you, your glasses are so fabulous. And they're such a fashion statement these days that I, I wouldn't worry about yeah, it. Yeah, those of you who- I love my glasses. Yeah, you know, go I have a million of them. <laughs> yeah, get a million pairs and use them as fashion statements. Use them yeah. as an accessory to your wardrobe. I love the way it looks and don't change your makeup because you wear eyeglasses. And you have this very cute thing about taking them on and off and on and off. I do. That's okay. a great style piece for you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. I do because I can't see and I'm like, oh. <laughs> Yeah, a lot of us wear readers and things. Um, so I feel like I can see my glass, my my eyes just as much with the with the uh, glasses on. Yep. I mean, right. I feel like it's yeah. the same. I mean, I don't know. No, I do too. I wear readers um, when I need mm -hmm. them, and and I I don't change my makeup based right. on that. But it's it's personal preference. Right. Again, like uh -huh. Stephanie said, just get it on. So you gotta be perfect. Look at it at the end. If you were to do your makeup and do what I did at the beginning, which is just eyes, not your face yet, you'd be scared because you'd be looking and going, oh, what did I do? I put too much eyes on. But until exactly. that foundation and blush and lip went on, then it comes together. So don't be afraid, just, just do it. Right. So I have one we... last question. Oh. oh yeah, go ahead, Dina. No, okay. go ahead. You know that little uplift in the eyebrow? Yes. Where is that supposed to hit? Yeah, I no. know. I, you know, it's funny. I know maybe Stephanie also can chime in. So here's the beginning of the brow. If you take mm -hmm. a brush or a pencil is where it begins. I like to say a third quarter of the way out. So not right, obviously not right in the middle. It's mm -hmm. as you are going at to the outer corner of the eye, a, a three quarters of the way out is where that lift should happen. Right. Okay. You use the corner of your nose as that base angle and and you should typically have that, even if you've lost some of your brow, that mm -hmm. just follow your own shape. It should okay. be there, um, Dina. So just follow your own shape. And, and whatever you do, girlfriends, just don't come out at the outer edge with the brow. Don't come down. You don't want McDonald's arches. So you don't want to do this. <laughs> you know, you don't want to do this. You want to be coming more out this way, right? So everything up and out. Okay, thanks. I mean, this has been really, really wonderful. Thank you. Um, for, for those of us that wear makeup all day, every day and love it, to those who just wanted simple tips. So Laura, you know, I mean, I think, and Johnny, we have given them a lot of tools for their makeup box, as we like to say. 
I think it's been great that you've helped them um, learn to accentuate their features because as you said, it's about the science and the contouring mm -hmm. and what to use and where on our faces has been really, really great advice and that you have us covered. The old oh. LG, you have us covered. Oh, um, um, oh, thanks, <laughs> Jacob. We are so excited that you were able to come and be with us today. It has been, yeah, I want to thank your PR team. They have been, um, oh, just sidebar. So they've been fantastic to work with and they are quick, quick, quick. They're so, so good. Yes, we look forward to um, getting back on the horn with Andrea and Jackie and your team again and doing more with you. Terrific. We have really, you've been a blessing to all of us and we appreciate And all of you ladies for joining us today. It's been fabulous. Thank you, everybody. Thank, Thank you for you. having us. Thank you so much. This yes. is the highlight of my year. <laughs> this is wonderful. <laughs> Find her on Instagram, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.